Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Simplipedia, Skincare Simplified. Today we're gonna to be talking about everything SPF and sunscreen. I have spent the last three weeks learning everything there is to know so that I can explain things to you in a more simplified fashion. I know how confusing the world of skincare can be, so let's demystify it together. If you're ready, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. All right, so we all know that sunscreen is important when you're actually out in the sun, but what's relatively new information is the when and the why and the how for everyday use. And it's actually a lot more complicated than I thought. Sun damage is the leading cause of aging in the skin, and it can lead to a myriad of different issues like scarring, brown spots, sunspots, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, and even melasma. And dermatologists actually say that if you do one thing, make it applying sunscreen daily. So if we can all agree that SPF and sunscreen are important, let's try to simplify this complicated concept. Sunscreen is the vehicle that delivers the SPF. This can be in the form of a lotion, a spray, a gel, or even a powder. Think of it as a barrier between your skin and the sun. SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it's usually represented by a number. This can be anywhere from like two to 100. Not quite. In fact, research shows that there's actually little difference between SPF 30 and SPF 50. Shocker, I know. Sorry in advance, but let's do a little bit of math. So here's what the SPF numbers mean. SPF 50 filters about 98% of the UV's rays. This is calculated by one divided by 50, which is the SPF number, meaning 0.02 or 2%, which means that it only allows in 2%, so it has about 98% coverage versus SPF 30, which by the same calculation would equal 97%. This means that the difference between SPF 30 and SPF 50 is only 1% coverage. However, the difference between something like SPF 30 and SPF 2 is consequential. SPF 2 only blocks about 50% of UV, UV rays, and that's compared to the 97% that you would have gotten with SPF 30. Does that make sense? In fact, 100% blockage is unlikely, but your goal should be to limit the amount of rays that can enter your skin. You want to make sure that your sunscreen provides both UVA and UVB protection. And I know I've mentioned this a few times, so let me explain what these actually are. These are two different types of rays that can actually enter your skin from the sun. UVB rays are short, high energy wavelengths that enter your skin through its top layer, and these can cause things like freckles, skin pigmentation, and sunspots. UVA rays, however, affect the DNA of your cells, and it goes a lot deeper. These are the rays that cause things like wrinkles and even skin cancer. If it's too much information, which I totally understand, just remember that UVA goes for aging and UVB is for burning. Better? Your sunscreen should be applied at the last step in your skincare routine, before the first step in your makeup routine in the mornings, meaning that you should use it after your morning moisturizer and before your morning primer. Just wait about two to three minutes to let it dry in between. So this is actually one of the most important things that I learned throughout my research on SPF and sunscreen. You need one fourth of a teaspoon of sunscreen every single day. And if it seems like a lot, it's because it is. You would think that you can just use it in the foundation or product that you're already using, but the answer is no. Well, I mean, you can, there's no such thing as an SPF police, right? But you're here because you want the truth. And so here's the kicker you need the full 1 4th teaspoon of SPF to get the proper protection. And even with that, you should still reapply throughout the day. So it's not about the mix, mix it's about the amount. Do you know how much primer, BB cream, foundation, or tinted moisturizer you'd actually have to use to get the full 1 4th teaspoon? It's about double or triple the amount of base coverage you would normally wear, which is gross and will likely clog your pores. Just use a true sunscreen and get the full coverage that you need. Make sure to apply it to your face and neck every single day. So here's a couple of other tips. SPF doesn't accumulate. So if you're wearing a primer with SPF 5 and a foundation with SPF 15, they don't combine and make you have coverage of SPF 20. It actually just goes with a higher number. So in this case, it would be SPF 15. And to add insult to injury, SPF does go bad and you need to repurchase it every single year. It actually deteriorates throughout time, so it won't be as effective as time goes on. And lastly, SPF does require a double cleanse, especially on your face at night to make sure that you get it all off. But you already need that and you should be doing it anyways, right? I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Simplipedia Skincare Simplified. 
I'd love to hear your ideas for any future videos, so if you have any ideas, please be sure to leave it in the comment box below. And I know that today's video was a little bit overwhelming, as is the entire world of skincare, but if that's the case, then don't worry. I have put a link in the bio below, and it's actually going to send you directly to my blog where I've written everything out so that you can read it again, you can actually go back and reference it later, and it's going to give you a quick cheat sheet to remember everything that we talked about here. I'd love to see you in my next video. If you enjoyed this, please do subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos.